CataractCoach.com, Caps Rexes Pearls, with our guest surgeon, Dr. Luis Escoff from Barranquilla, Colombia. First up is this ring that makes a mark on the corneal epithelium. That's going to serve as a guide now to create the capsular rexus. So we'll make a five and a half millimeter mark on the cornea, and that corresponds to a five millimeter rexus. Main incisions being made, and now the same keratome is going to be used to slice into the anterior lens capsule and flip over the capsule to start the capsular rexus. Very interesting technique. I've never seen this before. You could use a cystotome instead, but this technique saves a step. And now finishing up the caps rex, you can see that guide that was made at the beginning, that mark on the corneal epithelium, is quite useful. And that allows the surgeon to make a very precise caps rexus. You know, the rest of the case goes normally. Let's cut towards the end of the case. Here's with IOL insertion. And you can see this caps rexus may appear when you first glance at it to be a little decentered, but it's actually perfectly centered. Remember, you want that capsular rexus to line up with those Purkinje images, which is very close to the visual axis of the eye, especially in this case when we have a multifocal or trifocal diffractive lens. Viscolasix now being removed, and you can see the eye wells in good position. Go behind the eye well to remove more viscoelastic, and you can use those Purkinje images to center up that central zone of the eye well optic exactly in the visual axis or very close to it. There you go, sealing up the incisions, and let's take a look at the final positioning. Remember now there'll be two Purkinje images, and we want to line both of those up. And when those two Purkinje images are lined up, they'll be right there in the absolute center. Great technique. So two things that we learned. One is using the marker to plan out the rexus. So again, here's a case where the marker has been used to make a little indentation in the corneal epithelium. And again, because of magnification effects of the cornea, a five and a half millimeter mark on the surface of the cornea corresponds to about a five millimeter mark on the caps rectus, the anterior capsule. There's the same blade going in there. Be careful not to inadvertently enlarge your incision when you do this. This is a technique that may require some practice to master. And now that flap can be lifted up. And now forceps grabbing the capsule edge and a nice capsular rexus can be performed. We obviously know the capsular rexus is a very integral part in any cataract surgery. It's one of the most critical steps. And these are a couple of pearls that can help you become a little more efficient as well as more precise. If you're using that ring, you now don't need marks on your forcep tips like I typically do. And then you gotta be careful though, don't push too hard because you may cause a little bit of a corneal epithelial abrasion. Here now the eye wall going in the eye, and you can see that rexus now is beautifully centered. Remember not to use the pupil margin as your guide when you make a capsular rexus, because you can have a case like this where the dilation is very large, and you may inadvertently make too big of a capsular rexus. So you can't use the pupil margin or the level of dilation as a guide very easily. So in this case, we have a very nice five millimeter capsular axis. You can see going behind the lens now to remove viscoelastic. That's important to make sure that optic is directly on the capsule so that it can be placed precisely in lining up those diffractive rings without the lens moving in the post op period. So hydrate the incisions here and you'll see the lens will be nicely lined up. So thank you, Dr. Eskav. Appreciate the very nice video, some neat tricks for, to show our our viewers, and these are some good pros that you may want to incorporate into your surgical practice, and you can have a beautiful result just like that. And check out our teaching website, cataractcoach.com. I know you love the YouTube videos, but there's a lot more material on cataractcoach.com. Plus, you can sign up for a free daily email.